So today we're going to be solving for a set of linear equations by hand using linear algebra techniques. So we have here a problem where we have a two unit system. It's a continuous process and we have three stream. Most of the streams are fully um, defined except for three where we don't know either the mass flow rates or the compositions of those streams. And what we're trying to do is figure out both the flow rates and the, and the compositions of each of these streams. So that's our goal. So the first thing we have to do is set up our mass balance for the system. And so we can do um, overall balance around the total system. We can do balance around the individual unit operations. And we can do mass balance around our mixing point. And I'm not going to walk through the entire mass balance because that's not really the purpose of what we're doing here. You can work through that on your own. But essentially, um, I'll just walk you through how we do it on the overall system to get that set up. So the overall mass balance, we're looking at all the streams into our process and out of our process at a whole. So what we're going to have is 100 kilograms going in plus 30 equals the streams going out 40 plus 30 plus M3. So let's write that down. So we've got 100 plus 30 equals 40 plus 30 plus M3. And then we can solve that so that all of our unknowns are one side of the equation and all of our constants are on the other. And this is important for solving a set of linear equations. And so M3 we find is equal to 60 kilograms per hour. And we can do the same thing for the components. So if we do an overall uh, balance on A, that's just going to be our mass fractions times the stream flow rates. So that's going to be 0 0.5 times 100 plus 0 0.3 times 30 equals 0 0.9 times 40 plus... 0 0.6 times 30 plus x3 m3. And then we can reorganize and solve for our unknowns. So that's x3 m3 in this case is going to be equal to 6 kilograms per hour. All right, so when we're solving for, we can do the, rest, the same for the rest, and I've already done that below, but what we're going to notice is when we set up our set of linear equations, what we're going to have is six equations and six unknowns. The problem being that when you, when you want to solve in this way, you cannot have two unknowns that are multiplied by each other, and so we're going to have to come up with a, way deal, with a way to deal with this. The great thing is, is that we simply can replace this whole term with a new variable, and so this is just the mass flow rate of A in stream 3. So we give it a new variable and now it's its own unknown. So now um, at the end of the day we can come back and then recalculate for x3. Alright, so I've done this for all of the rest and I'll zoom out a little bit so you can actually see. And so you can go through and you can solve, um, pause this, solve, see if you can come up with the same result and then check your answers and then ensure that, that you understand how we did the rest of the balances around unit 1 and around the mixing point. All right, so now we have our six sets of equations, and as I said before, what we have, the format that we have is that all of our unknowns are on one side of the equation, and on the other side is a constant, all of our constants. And so now what we're going to do is put these into a matrix, a six by six matrix. And so the, the rows are going to be our equations, and the columns are going to be our variables, and our variables here are the six that are identified here for you that I've already written in mass flow rate of stream 1, stream 2, stream 3, and the mass flow rate of component A in stream 1, 2, and 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that first equation and we're going to figure out, um, write in our coefficients for our unknowns. So in this case, we have only M3, so we're going to fill in zeros for everything except M3, which is the third column, and everything else is going to be a zero. And we can repeat this for every single um, equation and I'm going to pause this and fill in the rest of the matrix. All right so I filled in the rest of the matrix and some of the ones that might be a little confusing are the last two rows so this is the mass balance around the mixing point point. and what you can see is m1 the coefficient is negative 1 and m2 the coefficient is 1. All right so the other thing that we have to do is fill in our constants that are on the other side and those are going to be um, on the other side of the in a, in a 
uh, 1 by 6 matrix on the other side of the equation, and so we just fill in the constants on the far side. So that's going to be 60 for the first equation. Uh, sorry. 6, 60, 14, 30, and 10. All right, so now what we can do is we can use linear algebra to solve this using Gaussian elimination. So the first thing we want to do is just reorder terms in a way that makes sense. And so if you look here, we'll see our goal is to get terms on the diagonal. So you can see straight away that we've got a bunch of terms that are just a single variable in um, a single one in them. So it makes sense to sort of reorganize our terms so those are in more appropriate locations. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull our third row up to our first, and we're going to pull our first row down to our third, so those are going to flip spots. We're going to pull our second row down to our sixth. The fourth row is in the perfect spot, so that's already where it needs to be. And then we're essentially going to flip up these two, so that because we see we have a we have a the last two rows, you see we have a one here and a one here, so we're going to move those up. So we're going to move this guy up to our second row, and we're going to switch this up here. So those three are essentially going to rotate positions. So if we do that, I'm going to pause it and I'll show you what that's going to look like in a second. All right, so this is what our, our flipped matrix is going to look like with all the terms we ordered, but we still have to reorder our coefficients. So when our first and our third rows flipped, they actually have the same coefficient, so they're both going to be 60. Okay. Um, we pull, our second row is pulled up from our fourth row, so the 30 is going to move up. Our 6 moves down to the bottom. Our uh, 10 moves up one row. And then our 14 stays in the same place. Alright, so that's pretty good, except we don't have just ones on our diagonal. We've got some negative ones off diagonal. So the next thing we need to do is do some... Um, addition of our rows. So what you can see is if we add rows 1 and 2, the 1 and the negative 1 are going to cancel. That's going to give us a 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So that's going to end up with, if we replace um, our second row with 1 plus 2, that's going to eliminate that row. And we can do the same thing with rows 4 and 5 to get rid of that negative 1 term. So if we do that, I'm going to pause again and we'll reload after I've rewritten this. All right, so I rewrote the matrix, but I still need to fix the coefficients on the end. So uh, the first, the third, the fourth, and the sixth rows all stay the same. So we end up with 60, 60, 14, and 6. Now, um, the new row 2 is going to be uh, 1 plus 2, so that's 60 plus 30 gives us 90. Um, our, our new row... 5 is going to be 4 plus 5, so that's 14 plus 10. It gives us 24. All right, so that's our solution. Um, so this is going to be M1, M2, M3. So those are the mass flow rates of those three unknown streams. And then we have the mass flow rate of A in 1, in 2, and in 3. So that's great. So, but I was told you that we might want to get back to our mass fractions. So, um, what we can then do is we know that our mass fraction is equal to of a in stream one is equal to m the mass flow rate of a in stream one divided by the total mass flow rate, which is 14 over 60 in this case. And if we solve that, what we get is this is 0 0.2333. And you can do the same thing solving for x2, that gives us 0 0.2667, and x3 gives us a, a mass fraction of 0 0.1. And with that, we have solved for all of our unknowns using a set of linear equations. Now, you might not want to do this for a problem as simple as this. Um, and solving by hand, I find um, it's kind of fun to do linear algebra by hand, but it's also it can be kind of slow. So you can also do this using um, software packages. And so we're going to have some other videos as part of this series where I show you how to do this using set this up and solve very, very quickly using software packages.